into, of course, our conversation again with Brent Linda Q, but that warrants, you know, a second meal to taste from Chef. That's my favorite part as well. Chef, uh, good to have you back. What are we indulging in next? Okay, we're going on to our main, which okay. is a sous vide uh, chicken mm. with lentils again. So we're trying to keep it healthy. Okay. And I'm trying to show you that we can actually use the same ingredients for starter and the main. Right. So now I'm, I'm reusing the lentils for the main as well. Okay. So it will be our starch. Chef, why are we only doing health? Is it because stats say that South Africa can actually use a lot more healthy food in a fun way, delicious way? Yes, we are doing healthy because now, even with the load shedding, mm. so this is a quick meal. Got you. So with this load shedding affecting us so badly, you can do your steam your veggies, steam your... Um, your chicken yeah and then you just fry your um, lentils yeah and then you have your purees and your uh, your cauliflower puree and your carrot puree there i like that using what you have in the house because i think with yes. load shedding um we think that you know let's just order in and spend mm. more money and you are saying you have something in your home exactly that you can utilize yes all right chef this looks absolutely amazing i can't wait to dig in thank you so much it's a pleasure and we'll have our next uh, meal in just a moment this looks so good uh, i'm not sure where my utensils are. i see my my, my knife here uh, but Chef, I'm sure you'll give me my, my fork in just a moment. But I, I'm okay. just seeing, you know, the lentils, as you mentioned, steaming, of course, of chicken. And I can't wait to dig in. I'm just going to try the carrot, uh, South Africa. Please pardon me using my hands because I just can't wait. It is what it is. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Okay. Before I salivate, let's continue. Uh, but do you cook much, by the way? Do you, do you whip it up in the kitchen? You know, I do. I, I happened to be on a show many years ago mm -hmm. called My Kitchen Rules. I may have... Uh, I come third with me, myself and my fiance. Um, so, so love to cook. Yeah. Um, he loves it more though, which I'm thankful for. Right. It means that that I can watch TV while he whips something up for me. Oh, so you don't uh, whip much. You have someone. <laughs> doing, you're so lucky, Brent. All right. Now let's continue our conversation. I think we, we were also talking about um, you know the gay community. This is so important because it needs you know this this, this conversation to to mm. happen, especially on on such influential uh, platforms such as ENCA. Gay conversion camps existing? No. Let's talk about that. You know, it was about eight years ago that a story um, rocked the nation of, of a young kid. He, he, was, he was barely even 20. Yeah. And he was sent to these, this conversion camp for two weeks. Um, and his, his parents were phoned to say that he's really sick. He, he sort of has to go to hospital. And he died a couple of weeks later. Mm. Um, the, the guy who ran the conversion camp uh, got 25 years in, in prison, from what I understand. Mm. But they are real. And they are here in, in South Africa in this day and age. There's no way. Um, it's, it's so bizarre to me to think that, that a, a family who, who may be afraid of something they don't understand, they, their child's a little bit different, for them to want to try to change the essence of that child's being mm. is so bizarre to me. Mm. Like, you are born who you are. And as a parent, you, you have the responsibility to accept your child for who they are. When that, when that baby's in the tummy and, and you're getting ready to meet this beautiful new child that you're gonna have, mm -hmm. you accept them for all that they are. Right. And I think that's, that's maybe another point that we need to speak about, acceptance. Yeah. Um, it's scary it's, it, it, for a parent to have to think, like, what is this? What, maybe they don't have gay friends, maybe they, they're not part of the gay community. I remember my mom when I told her when I came out, she, she, we were driving mm -hmm. and she'd heard via a friend uh, that, that, I, that I may be gay or that I was gay. Mm -hmm. I was young, I was 17, 18. Mm -hmm. I was in the passenger seat and um, it took her a lot of courage to ask because, again, a parent, this is a foreign territory for gotcha. her. But she asked and, and I remember her first reaction was, oh, there's something on my pants. She immediately sort of tried to shift the conversation. Okay. And then she went home, she dropped me off wherever I was mm. going. She went home and she sobbed. She mm. cried. Not because I was gay, mm. but because she was afraid of my life mm. and what my life might become. Gotcha. And if I would have to encounter bullying and perhaps I would get discrimination in the workplace. Whatever that was, my mom was afraid because she didn't understand what it was. Yeah. That was... I don't know, 20 years ago. Mm, um, mm, look mm, at me now. Look at you now. Look at me now. And, and where did you get um, to the point where you are now? Because there are still so many uh, young people who 
probably are not where you are in terms of confidence, yeah. are speaking against anything that is wrong, yeah. uh, would rather just close themselves in the house, uh, the worst case being committing suicide. Yeah. But you are here as an example to say, you matter, your life is valid. Totally. Everything about you is not a mistake. And you're speaking to us about it this morning. So, uh, you know, I was that kid. Okay. And I, I recall many, many nights um, praying to God before I went to bed to just make me like everyone else. Make my life easier. Mm. I don't want to be different. Mm. I, I, it's so much easier being straight in my mind at that, at that age. Mm. You don't want to be different. You don't want to be picked on. You don't want to be bullied. You, want, you don't want to face this life where you don't quite understand what path is going to be sort of you, what your life path would be. Right. Um, and and how, how do I find myself where I am today? A lot of time and acceptance within myself. Um, I'm confident with who, with who I am. I'm proud of who I am. Yeah. I'm not ashamed, but that takes time. Mm. Um, you, you as, a, as a gay person, for me, you live two lives. Mm. The one is who you are before you take the mask mm. off, and the, one, and the other is, is who you are meant to be. And I am who I, me who I meant to be. And I feel like it is my responsibility to shout from the rooftops that if you feel even slightly a little bit different, on whatever that scale is of being gay or, mm -hmm. or whatever, mm -hmm. there is nothing wrong with you. Mm. God made you who you're meant to be. And you are perfect just the way you are. Mm -hmm. And one day, maybe not now, one day in the future, you'll be able to look into the mirror and love who you are and love the body you live in and not live with a constant trauma. And, and I think that's the voice that I have, is, is that it's important to... If I can save one kid... Yeah. If I, can, if I can let one person look at themselves and not hate themselves, my job is done. Absolutely. You mentioned that you pray to God and you mentioned that, you, you know, you, you have a dependence yeah. uh, on God in, 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 in assuring you uh, that he did not create you by mistake. Yes. What about those who say to you, and I'm sure you've probably read this or heard this so many times, Brent, that God does not approve? 100%. So, mm. so I'll say this. The church saved me. Mm. And, and that's the craziest thing to hear. I'm a gay Christian. What? That's mad. Mm. Um, I'm a gay Christian. I believe in God. I believe that he made me exactly who I'm meant to be. And, and I believe that, that, that people like to pick and choose which parts of the Bible they, they want to focus on. Mm. So the first, the first thing there is how does my marriage or my love impact you at all? Mm. How does my life impact you at all? Why do you want to be involved with my life? Right. If, if that's what you want to say, like homophobia or gay is wrong, whatever that is. Right. Why does it impact you? Because it doesn't, actually. It's the first thing. And maybe the most important is that the Bible and the book was written about love. That is all it is about. I think love, the word, appears more in the Bible than any other thing. Right. And, and if, if I've learned anything from the Bible is that love is all that matters. And if it is true, if it is kind, if it is not hurting anyone, mm -hmm. then love is right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and what I take from the Bible, what I choose to pick and take, is that we need to love each other. And that's, that's a lesson that I live with every single day. I yeah. don't care who you are. Even people who might dislike my lifestyle or not agree with it, mm -hmm. I'll still love you. Right. Might not like you, yeah. <laughs> but There's I'll still difference. love you. There's a difference. There's a difference there. And before we close this off, you mentioned earlier on uh, when we spoke about uh, these gay conversion camps that do exist in South Africa in 2022, um, that you know the perpetrator received approximately 25 years uh, for, for their actions. What more do you think can be done by the SAPS as well as you know, organizations like the Human Rights Commission in preventing preventative measures, if we're talking about corrective rape still existing yes. in South Africa, murder still uh, uh, you know, existing against uh, the community, uh, dismembering of bodies, assaulting, uh, etc., bullying, what more do you think can be done as a preventative measure because lives need to be saved? So I think conversations like these, mm. that's, that's what changes um, the narrative. You're going to get someone who's watching us right now mm -hmm. who may think a certain way, but, but after hearing us talk, they, their perspective might change. Right. And they might go, hey, actually, um, I don't need to be hateful. 
or I don't need... The, so the conversation mm. is the first sort of point. Then get involved with your community. Get involved. I like to say, if you don't have someone in your life that's, that's part of the alphabet mafia, the yeah. LGBT yeah, community, yes, yes, yes. if you don't have someone in your life like that, find someone. Have a conversation with them. Because more than anything, they'll teach you that they're just human. Gotcha. And, and being gay is not all I am. It's one part of me. I, I ride motorbikes. I used to race cars. Mm. I, I run. I go to gym. Um, I write good things. Gay is just one part of me. It's not the whole of me. Yeah. Well, Brent, we're going to leave it there for now. And still come back. Brent Lindeke joining us uh, right here on the SA Morning Soul.